What makes DNS attacks so hard to defend against? So, the fact of the matter is that that port 53 must traverse through all the firewalls uninterrupted. If you don't have DNS, you don't have internet. This is not like stopping a Twitter feed or a Facebook disk or, or ICMP. No, no. This, this always has to go through. The other characteristic of DNS is that it has to be very fast uh, because that's where the whole thing begins in the conversation. So delays are not accepted. So therefore UDP was the uh, protocol that the, the, the designers of the internet selected for it, uh, uh, which makes it really fast, uh, but uh, it can be spoofed. Technically speaking, there is uh, there can be DNS traffic over TCP, IP, uh, or TCP, but uh, that's only between DNS servers. And yeah, some clients can do it on exceptions, but uh, it's after, after some delay. So in reality, UDP is the king of the DNS traffic, therefore can be spoofed. Therefore, I can send a DNS request to a DNS server, pretending it that it come from somebody else. Let's see some type of uh, classic uh, DNS attacks. Uh, let's start with uh, amplification. So in this case, you, you get a group of botnets that, uh, or a botnet that sends a uh, spoof uh, short request uh, to DNS uh, resolvers that which response is going to be very long and there are going to be lots of them coming and I'm going to make them from my bot that has, you know, maybe thousands of uh, if, uh, elements out there sending requests on behalf, spoof on behalf of my the person I want to attack and then all the answers that are going to be long that come from that DNS resolver are going to go against the poor IP that I'm attacking that I spoofed. So DNS tunneling is nothing more than really encode in the text fields of the DNS uh, traffic command and control to botnet. So it can go freely and it can be interpreted by the uh, by the uh, victims of the uh, command and control. Let's uh, take a look at uh, cache poisoning. This is uh, sending a request for a random or, or uh, type of uh, DNS request that my DNS uh, server is going to ask somebody else because I, I don't have that the IP address for that strange URL. So it sends it to one of my victim, my, my attacker uh, DNS uh, that pretends to be DNS resolver and in it comes not only the resolution for this IP, but also I change the mapping and put, for example, mybank.com's uh, IP address to make sure that the people that go into that other DNS uh, original uh, resolver gets to my uh, malicious site. DNS charging is nothing more than malware that typically modifies the computer settings and make it point to DNS uh, resolvers that are really malicious. And subdomain, which is the, you know, in recent history was the, the, the classic of the uh, DIN attack in which the I, I went to, for example, Amazon.com, this example for my company.com, and I put a subdomain in front of it uh, that uh, it is uh, random and, and, and does not exist. And I get botnet of cameras in the case uh, with the Myriad uh, uh, malware that are going to be sending gazillions of these requests. Uh, and then when people try to go to mycompany.com, the, the, the DNS server is overwhelmed and it cannot uh, respond. So again, uh, short, short uh, review of the type of attacks and you, and you see begin to see why this is so hard. But how can I detect this type of attack? There are some things that uh, I can actually do. So, for example, I can use IP reputation. It's not bad, but uh, that only works if you are not patient zero. If this attack is designed specifically for you, there are not going to be bad IP reputation for those uh, bad uh, DNS uh, resolvers. Another technique is time alive, uh, which uh, oh, is uh, uh, fluxing, IP fluxing, which is, you know, how long this uh, DNS has been around? Is this something that was recently register? If, if that is the case, that might be an indication of being something bad. Where was that uh, uh, the domain uh, actually registered? You know, I mean, who was the register? I mean, you, you can do that. And there are really other techniques that are used to detect when there's something malicious reflecting this and other type of attacks on the DNS uh, request. Now, as we have shown in a in another video, Curator now with uh, Q&I 
with Network Insight, you can uh, actually get the, the actual DNS query and analyze it in Curator and put some rules around it, uh, for, for example, on IP reputation and some other things. And that's always good, but you have to know what you are looking for. What, what were the things that you do not know that, uh, for example, have no IP reputation or have no uh, previous patterns that can be detected? What if, they, if somebody is targeting your organization? Well, we need some sort of prediction of that. And for that, we need some sort of uh, analytics. So I need a very capable box of really taking all the traffic of my network and analyze it and do sophisticated things like so cluster analysis to see, you know, what is deviating from the norm in my company with my type of traffic, this type of requests, uh, you know, deviate from my common cluster. So let me take a look at those. Some decision tree to, to, to look at this type of characteristics, uh, uh, some uh, Bayesian uh, network, neural network, and, you know, there are very many other techniques. And the right type of platform for that is... Technologies like IBM Streams has been, you know, working for, for 10 years doing this type of analysis. An algorithm like the one that SPSS actually bring that combined with uh, geo IP or, or location data, combined with the, an X-Force feed to already get, you know, what has been cataloged as malicious there and uh, some blacklisting that you may want to have in your, you may want to add as, as part of, of your uh, normal process and you may also want to have some white listing and process all that and in real time with all that massive amount of traffic is going to generate some results that are going to be sent to my curator box and curator with fire offense I can do searches and I can do you know all the all the other good things that's what we're going to be showing uh, in uh, this demo. The package I installed from the app exchange is this one, Cyber Sentinel from Jesco. Um, and the, it has with a, it comes uh, with a VM that has SPSS and streams in it. And here's the view of the actual analytics uh, of, that is uh, performing. And I'm replaying some pickups that has normal data embedded with some real attacks and the tool is actually processing this and sending events into curator so let's actually take a look at uh, in here and we see some of these uh, type of events uh, event notification predicting blacklisting and that's the key you know that predicting I'm going to blacklist something based on the data in my company this is not something that may or may not have seen before anywhere else but again with all those analytics that I mentioned before uh, can actually uh, is actually detected. We can actually pause this and take a look at uh, 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 the type of data that uh, this solution sends already process uh, to curator. So in here we can see you know that, that it sends it in nice uh, leaf format for curator to detect it, and the package also comes as, uh, with some rules that begin to fire as soon as I get those uh, particular events. So in here we see uh, the malicious, the destination IPs, and uh, we can actually go ahead and immediately put those uh, into reference sets and uh, or, or notify my uh, IPSs to block incoming data uh, coming from those IPS as we have shown with Palo Alto and uh, with XGS, and we will also show that uh, how you do the same with uh, Cisco IPSs as well. Uh, so in order to, to do this dynamic, oh, my, my, my engine detects something, curator fires offenses until IPSs block these things as they come in so we can stop the attack uh, uh, real quickly. The tool also comes with some safe searches. As you can see, these are advanced searches, AQL searches, that, you know, get me, as, as, as we are saying, that the top domains are being sending uh, bad DNS traffic to me, and these are the domains, and... Uh, you can see that these are not, <laughs> you know, good uh, type of uh, uh, domain IDs, and these are the my uh, the machines from my internal network that has uh, fallen victim to this. <laughs> 